Good morning, neighbors. I'm going to sing, How Can I Keep From Singing? There is an endless song Echoes in my soul Oh, I hear the music ring And though the storms may come I am holding I cling How can I keep from singing your praise How can I ever say enough How amazing is your love How can I keep from shouting your name I know I am loved by the King and it makes my heart want to sing I will lift my eyes in the darkest night for I know I save your lips and I will walk with you knowing you'll see me through and I'll sing the songs you give how can I keep from singing your praise how can I ever say enough how amazing is your love how can I keep from shouting your name I know I am loved by the King and it makes my heart want to sing. Amen. You know, when Paul wrote to the church in, Thess in Thessalonica, we'll read in 1 Thessalonians uh, chapter 5. And I really like the beginning and ends of these, not that I don't like the middle, but there brings a kind of humanity uh, when the books are in, when Paul's writing these letters. You know, he's just writing letters to his his brother and sisters, his friends in these churches, and he uh, he ends it. Uh, we'll start. Uh, we'll start with verse fourteen. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn those who are unruly, comfort the faint-hearted, uphold the weak, be patient with all. You know, he and I, it's just like these catch alls kind of uh, see that no one renders evil for evil to anyone, but always pursue what is good, both for yourselves and for all. Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise prophecies, test all things, hold fast. What is good? Abstain from every form of evil. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful, who also will do it. And I really like that because he's ending it with these encouraging words. You know, he's saying, you know, as I'm kind of like, as I'm wrapping up, I'm just letting you all know this. You know, keep praying. You know, comfort those who are faint-hearted. If you know those who are unruly, those who aren't really obedient, you know, uh, warn them. You know, you don't have to go beat them up or anything. Just give them, hey, you know, you're not acting right. Uphold the lift, uh, uphold the weak, lift them up. Be patient with everyone. 
And I really like how he's saying these things, you know, to this church as he's wrapping up this letter that would he wouldn't have never known this, but it's been preserved throughout the ages. You know, don't quench the spirit. Uh, be careful. You know, basically, don't quench the spirit. Be careful. Don't think you know everything. You don't know everything. Uh, do not despise prophecies. That means there's sometimes there's going to be problems. People are emotional or giving into these things, but he just let lets them know test all things. Hold fast what is good. You know, test it. You know, and if it's good, hold fast. Don't let it go of, the, of these prophecies and these things that are happening. But I wanted to really pay attention to. Uh, I've probably mentioned this before, but it goes along with the song. In verse 16, it just says, Rejoice evermore. It's one of the shortest verses in the Bible. But he's letting them know, why, why would you even have to say that? Because there's times where it's going to become difficult and you'll want to uh, give in and you won't want to uh, remain strong in this rejoicing. And it's something that when there's a lot of things going on, a lot of negativity, a lot of problems in your life, it's easy to... Uh, not rejoice but then when we sing this song how can i keep from singing and when it says there's an endless song echoes in my soul i hear the music ring and though the storms may come i am holding on to the and to the rock i cling there is something he's placed within us you know though storms of life come and all these terrible things we can hold on because there is this song within us he placed it within us you know this joy that's why he said rejoice evermore and uh so i was looking up different things that went along with this and there's this book uh by david mccullough called john adams and they made a film of it and uh though this may not be a direct quote from john adams himself i'm not sure but it's interesting how they how they presented it because at the end of his life you know this was one of the founding fathers you know the fourth of july and all these things but he was so busy in life. He did so much. If you re ever read the book uh, by David McCullough, it's, you think, my goodness, how much life he packed into one life. And he did live to be around 90, I think. But there's so much. I mean, there's very few people who, uh, you think, my goodness, you crammed your life. And yet at the end, he's walking this field with one of his sons. And he looks down at this plant that his mother planted years ago. And she had told him, you know, find, rejoice in the mundane. You know, sometimes we get so busy in this life, this life is so fast. People are going nonstop, nonstop sound and, and speed and all this. We've got to get this done, got to get this done, got to get this done. But it's at the end of his life when he looks down and says, he sees this. And suddenly he sees beauty in what we would call the mundane. There's something that you just pass by. What's the big deal about that? You know, we very seldom stop and take and smell the roses as they say but there's a quote from it it says he just he quotes the scripture rejoice ever more i wish that it had been in my heart and on my tongue ah oh, i am filled with an irresistible impulse to fall on my knees in adoration right here but he's an old man so he says if only my knees would bend like they used to you know, I like that part when it says, I wish that it had always been in my heart and on my tongue. You know, rejoice evermore that the beauty of God's creation, all that he's done throughout history, and he's kept his word and he's brought it to us. So we can ask ourselves, how can I keep from singing? How can I keep from worshiping and praising the Lord with all that he's done? Because though this world falls apart and we see terrible things surrounding us, my soul is secure. Nothing can take that away. I can rejoice evermore forever from everlasting to everlasting and well someday we'll reach heaven and we will bow on our knees and still rejoice for all eternity for what he has done and so we see his beauty in his smallest creations and his greatest but we have to ask ourselves lord why am i not singing today after all that you've done for me so god help us all in jesus christ's name amen <laughs>